So now we're going to look at something called simultaneous equations. You might have seen simultaneous equations done slightly differently to this. I think this is the best way of doing simultaneous equations. If you're happy doing it the way you've been doing it, carry on doing it that way. I wanted to show you this first. So this is two graphs. This obviously is a graph of y equals a half x minus one. And this is the graph of y equals minus two x plus four. Now, if we were to solve these simultaneous equations, we need to find the point where both these equations, where the y and x values give exactly the same answer in both these equations. So where y equals x here, and y satisfy both these equations, basically. And we can see straight away from the graph that that point is here. It's the point to zero. Now we can see that straight away. Great. We need to prove that now by using these two equations. Now let's imagine we didn't have the graphs. We didn't have gra access to graph paper. We didn't have access to anything else. Or it stopped somewhere, or the, the crossing point was somewhere completely um, ambiguous, like that. And we weren't quite sure exactly what the coordinates were. We need to be able to find them. So, it's actually very straightforward. We need them to satisfy the same thing. So, the y must be the same in both of them. So basically, what we're saying is both these equations must equal each other. So we can get rid of the y's. If the y's must be the same, we've got a half x. We know that a half x minus 1 must equal minus 2x plus 4. Okay? We know that must be true. These two must equal each other at that point. So we can just write that out. And now look at that. I think we've seen something like that before. That's just some basic algebra. We just need to solve this equation for x. Let's have a go. So, let's get all the x's onto the left-hand side. So, what do we have to do? Back to our algebra again. We take, we add 2x to each side this time, because minus 2x plus 2x will equal 0 to get rid of it from this side. So we add 2x to both sides. That's going to give us half x plus 2x can give us 2.5x minus 1 will equal 4. We need to get rid of this minus 1. How do we get rid of the minus 1? We add 1 to either side. So we're adding that 1 on. So we're going to get 2.5x equals 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay, 2.5 times what equals 5? 2.5 times 2 equals 5. So we can just go straight to the answer. We found that it must be right. x must equal 2. So that's found our x value. What about our y value? Well, for our y value, we just substitute this x back into either one of these equations, whichever one we want. I'm going to plug for this one. doesn't really matter. So y equals a half. y equals minus 2x plus 4. So y will equal minus 2 times by 2. That's what our x is. Plus 4. What's minus 2 times 2? Minus 2 times 2 is 4. It's minus 4. So y will then equal minus 4 plus 4, which is 0. I'll just show you the case that that x would have worked in the other equation. So in this, if we use this equation, we've got y equals a half of 2 minus 1. What's half of 2? Half of 2 is 1. So that equals 1 minus 1, which equals 0. So that is how we solve two simultaneous equations. We're given two equations on a graph, and we're told to find the point where they cross. All it is is solving simultaneous equations. And that is how we do it. Let's look at another example. We're going to get rid of the graph and everything on the board. Let's look at another example of simultaneous equations. May I wanted to show you this graph just so you know that that is also simultaneous equations. A lot of people will see two graphs, two uh, straight lines crossing. They'll be told to find the point where they cross and they'll, they'll worry because they've never seen it before. Whereas if you showed them a simultaneous equation, they'd be able to do it. I want you to be able to apply your knowledge to any situation. So let's have a look at some other simultaneous equations.
So we can look at this one. We've got, we're given the equations 2x equals 6. Take away 4y. We're also given that 4x equals minus 3. Minus 3y. Okay, so we can't do what we did before. We can't just say, well, these basically, they have to end up being the same. They have to, we need a solution where the x and y solution will, will work in both. So I can't just make that direct substitution like I did before. What I need to do is I need to get the numbers, something in them, the same. So in this case, it's probably going to be easier to get the x's to be the same. How do I get the x's to be the same? I'm going to have to times this whole equation by 2. So we will call this equation 1 and this equation 2 at the moment. So I'm going to do equation 1 times 2. That's going to give me 2x times 2. It's going to give me 4x. OK. Equals 6 times 2. It's going to give me the 12. Minus 4y times 2 is going to give me minus 8y. OK, now you can see I've got 4x equals something, 4x equals something. So now I can just say that this must equal this, because 4x is going to be the same as 4x. So let's just write that out. We say minus 3 minus 3y equals 12 minus hy. Again, we've just come back to our simple algebraic equation. We just need to now solve this. So, again, let's get all the y's on the left hand side. So I'm going to have to, I've got minus 8y, you're ahead of me, it's plus 8y. Okay, it's both sides. Okay, so I'm going to have minus 3. Minus 3y plus 8y and by a number line, we're minus 3, we're going to be moving that way. It's the same as actually saying 8y minus 3y. It's going to be plus 5y. Okay, and that equals, just equals 12, doesn't it? Because we've, what we've done is we cancelled off that. 8y, so we get 12. Okay, now I need to get rid of the minus 3. Obviously, get rid of the minus 3, I add on a 3. Just do that to both sides. So I get that 5y must equal, 12 plus 3 must equal 15. Okay, and we can see straight away, obviously, we divide both sides by 5. If we really want to put it in, you can probably see the answer straight away anyway. We find that y must equal 3. Okay? Right. Now let's find what the x value must be. Let's go back to one of these. Which one looks like it's going to be slightly easier? Uh, let's use this one. It doesn't make any difference. So, let's, let's have a look. 2x equals 6 minus 4y. What's 4y? 4y is 12. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay. So 2x must equal minus 6. 6 minus 12, minus 6. Okay, divide both sides by 2. To get rid of that 2. Those then cancel off. And we find that x must equal minus 3. So y is 3 and x is minus 3. Now, we can just go bang done that. Let's check it. We've still got this equation left over, so in theory if we put y equals 3 and x equals minus 3 into this equation, that will prove to us that we've got the right answer. So let's do that. I'm just going to do that in red straight underneath here. It's going to make it look a bit messy, but there we go. So 4 times by minus 3 equals minus 3 minus... Right. 3 times y. y is 3, so 3y three is 9, so minus 9. So what's 4 times y is 3? It's 
minus 12, or minus 3 minus 9, it's minus 12. That's a big fat tick. We got that right. So that's simultaneous equations. We're going to do one more, slightly difficult one. Now, if you're used to doing this simultaneous equations a different way, you'll see that this is written out in the way, the standard way for you to be able to do it. Easiest for you. I will need a calculator for this question as well. So we've got 5x plus 3y equals 6. And we've got 3x minus 7y equals 19. Okay, we've got to solve this. What we need to do. First step always, get one of either the x's or the y's to be the same, okay? And personally looking at this, I'm more of a fan of getting the x's being the same just because they're on the left. If you want to make the y's the same, up to you. So how do I get them to be the same? Well, I've got 5x here and 3x here. I need to find the lowest common multiple. It's going to be 15. So this equation, which is equation 1, I need to times it by 3, this equation, equation 2, I need to times it by 5. So, the new equations we're going to get are going to be 15x plus 9y equals 3 times 6, 18. Okay. We're also going to get 15x minus 7 times 5, 35y equals 19 times 5. It's 19, what's 20 times 5? It's 100. 19 times 5 is going to be 5 less than that. It's going to be 95. Now, I just did that in my head very simply. To be honest, if I was sat in an exam, I'd use my calculator. I'd use my calculator for pretty much everything there because why not? It, it just gives you that added bit of confidence in the exam that you're getting everything absolutely spot on. I'll get my calculator out because I'll need that in a second. So I now need to rearrange one of these so it's in terms of 15x. So let's rearrange this equation we'll call equation 3 and we'll call this one 4. So let's, let's get this in terms of 15x. So, I find that 15x equals, what do we have to do? We have to take 9y away from both sides. Okay, so I find that it equals 18 minus 9y. Okay, I can now put this in place of the 15x here, because that's what 15x equals. So I'm just write it straight in. Okay, I'm going to go back to the black pen. So I now know. So let's see what we're doing. We're putting that in place of that. Okay, so we get 18 minus 9y minus 35y equals 95. Actually, relatively easy for us to, to simplify. Let's move this 18 straight away. Let's just get rid of it. Um, we'll do this simplifying after we've got rid of it. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to minus 18 from each side, aren't I? Take 18 away. Okay. So, minus 9, minus 35. It's going to give us minus 44. Y. Okay? Equals 95 minus 18. You could do it in your head. I'm going to do it on my calculator just to make life a little bit easier. It's 77. Okay. So now I need to divide both sides by minus 44 in this case. To get my Y. That's going to tell me what y equals. So, y 
would be cool. 77, divided by 44. We get it's minus 1 and 3 quarters, minus 1.75. Yeah, don't be afraid to use a calculator. If it's a calculated paper, if it's a non-calculated paper, don't use it. Y equals minus 1.75. So, let's go back to the top again. We need to find what X is. So, either equation we want to use. Let's use this one. So, 5X plus 3Y. What's 3Y? 3 times minus 1.75. You could do it in your head, use your calculator if you need to. It's minus 2.5, so plus minus 5.25, and that will equal 6. Plus minus, it's going to be a minus, isn't it? So I need to get rid of this from this side. I need to add, I need to add 5.25. To either side. Okay, so I'm going to get that 5x equals 6, add 5.25. It's going to be 11.25. Then you're going to need to divide both sides by 5 to get my answer for x. So x going to be 11.25 x is going to be 2.25 or 2 and a quarter and there we go again let's just check that out let's check it works in here so 3 times 2.25 minus 7 times by minus 1.75. Okay, and that should equal 19. Let's see what it does equal. 3 times 2.25 is going to give us 6.75. Okay, 7 times minus 1.75. It's going to give us 12.25. Minus, minus, it's going to give us a plus, isn't it? So plus 12.25. Or 6.75 at 12.25. Thankfully, it's 19. We can give ourselves a big fat tick. We know we got that question right. That's the great thing about maths. In an exam, you do this question. You do this last bit of checking, you know for certain you've got the right answer. You know those point, those marks are in the back. So, you need to get practicing on these. There's lots of them in the booklet to practice. Enjoy, and I'll see you back for some more graphs.